This may not look like much now, but under the surface, there's a lot going on. Mid-Continent Business Solutions' phone, data, and video network is growing where your business grows, with more solutions than anyone, expanding capabilities below ground, so when you break ground, your phone, data, and video services are ready, with reliability and local service built for your business. And that's groundbreaking. Mid-Continent Business Solutions, making your business better. This presentation from Midco Sports Network is presented by Mid-Continent Business Solutions, making your business better. Sports Arena, home team out to a 10-point lead. That was the second foul on Dylan Hale for North Dakota State, so Mike Felt is in for the Bison through Valentine, a miss. Marshall Bjorklund with the rebound. Joel Lindbergh also in for North Dakota State. Taylor Braun, another tough shot that goes. And the Bison hits six of eight from the field. Impressive body control right there for, for Taylor Braun. And nice uh, uh, late transition basket. Defense did not get back and get set. And I know Oakland scores a lot of points, but uh, right now I think they've got too many one pass and jacks going on where you don't make the defense work. And even if you got guys that can penetrate, if a defense is set, never has to change sides of the floor or rotate, everybody can pretty much stay home. Foul on Valentine, his first. <coughs> Valentine is a very physical defender. It seems like he's got his forearm in uh, Taylor every time he puts it on the floor. Valentine goes out. Dante Williams on for Oakland, number two. He'll guard Taylor Braun. There is Mike Felt up a nice feed from Bjorklund. Nice cut without the basketball, playing off that post entry. And that's the first time NDSU's gotten the ball into the block and they come away with two points. Bader got the roll, his first two. Bader's actually leading them, well, in the two conference games thus far, leading them in scoring, but second on the team to Reggie Hamilton. Hamilton is 0 for 3 and Bison finally missed a shot and saved by Oakland. Hamilton in the open court. He's got Alexander on him now. Good job by Alexander using his length. Doesn't have to guard him as closely because he's with long arms. He's able to guard him with a nice little cushion. Another miss three by Laval Perry, or Lucas Perry. <coughs> Oakland three of 10 from the field. He's Bjorklund, who's not looked for his own yet. He made a great move and left it short. Nice little reach step there to get himself in some space, but uh, unable to finish with the left hand. Now Bader has not been close yet, but a matter of time before he probably dials in the three-point shot. Bader has missed his first two. Yeah, nice start defensively for the Bison. Doing a good job of controlling penetration. Uh, was really impressed with their transition defense getting back. Um, Oakland's a team you need to make work to score. If you just let them run free, they're gonna, they'll pile the points up on you. Been a while since North Dakota State has beaten Oakland. The Grizzlies beat NDSU twice last year. A seven-point game here in Fargo, and then a two-point game in Rochester, Michigan on Oakland's home court at the o Arena. And I think people forget that, you know, Oakland's been Division I for just 12 years now. You know, you've, uh, they've garnered so much attention, you, you think of them as an established traditional program, but Coach Campy's done a great job of building this program in a short amount of time in their transition to Division I. Started that transition in 97, full-time in D1 in 99. Jordan Auberg was blocked inside, and here's Hamilton, who's yet to put one through the basket. Laval Lucas Perry, who started at Arizona, transferred to Michigan, is now finishing up at Oakland. 
Trying to run Bader, got the two three-point shooters on each other. Petros had it in his hands, and I think they're going to get Trayvon Wright for reaching in. Trayvon was just a little tardy dropping down to provide that secondary help. After Jordan Auberg had to step off, you'll see Auberg come to help. And Trayvon was just a step late, getting down there with that secondary dig. Petros, Richard, freshman, kind of thrown in there. They had another big guy, Ilya Mujatinovic, who went back Jeez. to Europe and uh, is playing professional ball in Europe, but he was going to be their center this year. So Petros kind of having to step in. Missed both free throws. And NDSU gets a fortunate tap, and we'll get the ball back. Here is another seven-footer for Oakland coming into the game. Kyle Sikor is also a redshirt freshman out of the state of Florida. Hmm. <laughs> I think it was the right call. And, of course, Oakland does not have Keith Benson anymore. He was drafted by the Atlanta Hawks. They cut him last week, and he's kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. Alexander again got right to the rim with it. Auberg couldn't get it either, and a foul going to go on Jordan Auberg. And we're going to break at 11.41 to go. Bison out to a 12-point lead after some early turnovers. NDSU settling in. To some, advertising is about numbers, counting reach, ratings, and impressions. But to smart advertisers, it's about targeting, reaching their best customers efficiently. With affordable cable advertising from Mid-Continent Business Solutions, you can speak directly to your target audience using the specific networks and shows they're watching. So what's more important to your business? Counting people or finding the people who count? Mid-Continent Business Solutions, making your business better. Joel Lindbergh gets the defensive assignment on Reggie Williams now. Seven-footer Sikora in the middle now, number 40 for Oakland. Hamilton, still no hoop, but he's going to get to the free throw line where he is an excellent free throw shooter at 89%. Oh, yeah, he got him on the arm. It's one of those situations where the freshmen just make him finish. If he makes that shot, it's high degree of difficulty. You, sometimes you just tip your cap, but... Uh, don't put him at the free throw line. Let that score get into a rhythm, getting his first points from the free throw line. Bass and Valentine back for Oakland. First two points for Reggie Hamilton. LeBron got a step. Here is Lindbergh, true freshman. Going against a crafty defender in Hamilton, and there's some craftiness out of Lindbergh for two. A uh, nice possession right there. Took about 20 seconds off the shot clock and got a nice isolation for Lindbergh on top. Bison have success getting to the paint. Bader heating it up now with a two. Uh, pretty good job by Felt chasing through that screen. But uh, Bader th shows off that pretty stroke. Lindbergh. He got away with one there as Bass goes down. Shot clock to five, Trayvon Wright for three. And that was stuck out of bounds off of the hand of Reggie Hamilton. And another possession here for NDSU. See if they recognize they got three seconds on the shot clock here. The other thing to watch is if uh, Saul Phillips, if they maintain this lead, is Dylan Hill going to sit till the second half? Or uh, will he get some more minutes in the first half with those two fouls? Always a... Each coach is a little bit different with that philosophy, whether they play guys with two. Sometimes it depends on the individual, how cognizant they are of their fouls and if they're smart enough to stay out of foul trouble. So, 
I thought the shot by Trayvon Wright hit the rim. They did not reset the shot clock, so that's what they're taking a look at. If not, it will be at three seconds, but. Just for the naked eye, it didn't look to me like the ball changed direction at all no, as right. it passed by the rim, but. Uh, It's nice to go over the monitor. It gives Coach Phillips a chance to draw something up real quick for a three-second possession. There's Bjorklund, who last time we saw him up here, Juno was against Fresno State, and he had a career night with 27 points, 14 rebounds. There has not been a whole lot of anything in the post so far tonight, really, for either team. Yeah, and they've been, they've been very conscious of defending the post. Oakland has, and I think... NDSU has done a good job this year of playing inside out, always attacking from that block area. But uh, you know, Coach Campy knows what he's doing, and obviously they're they're trying to make NDSU a little bit more one-dimensional and have them more perimeter oriented. Another look at that shot by Trayvon Wright, and ooh. I thought it did skip. Yeah. But meanwhile, they left the shot clock at three and then a foul anyway as NDSU was trying to get the ball in. Yeah, good eyes because that did change direction. So a North Dakota State foul so they don't get a shot out of it anyway after all that. And we hit the 10 minute mark of the first half. NDSU was led by a dozen. Petros shut off, and Hamilton is grabbed there by Lindbergh. Well, good, strong closeout to the shooter. Maybe gave up a little too much cushion. And this is bad news for the Bison as Oakland goes into the bonus with nine and a half minutes left. And uh, we got a guy like Hamilton that knows how to induce fouls and uh, rack up easy points from the free throw line. Hasn't hit one yet from the field. He's 0 for 3 on field goal attempts, but he's 4 of 4 at the free throw line. Dante Williams, freshman back in. And Reggie Hamilton out for a moment. Didn't know if he went knee to knee or if he got that knee in his thigh. Gotta love those Charlie horses. Alexander, meanwhile, right back at him to Trayvon Wright. The high flyer from Waterloo, Iowa. And Greg Campy does not like the way his team is guarding the dribble right now. And Wright puts the Bison back up by 10. That middle penetration is tough to defend. It puts a, puts a lot of pressure on your help. Really, the only place you can help is up the floor. And that leads Trayvon open. It also helps having a special player that can make decisions when he gets in there and is creative enough to get the ball to the right people. And a guy that can finish like that. Oakland again coming off a 91-76 loss to Western Michigan. And after that game, Coach Campy was distraught about the way his team has been playing defense lately. Coming into the Summit League portion of the season now. And then I think part of the key to their success is being solid defensively because the tempo they play with offensively puts a lot of pressure on their defense. They have to guard an increased number of possessions every game because they shoot so quick. So I think sometimes even when NDSU has some empty possessions where they use a lot of the shot clock, it takes a lot of pressure off of their defense. And then you can get away with a quick possession like, uh, like Braun just had there with a nice little pull-up jumper. Six points for Taylor Braun. And now a rebound in Oakland. Continues to miss fire, four of 14 from the field. Taylor Braun calling for it. He goes by the freshman and then a step in again on Petros and this will be his second foul. About three times we've seen guys flip over 